So I usually show off my smaller projects on Instagram and Facebook. That's also where I give progress updates on bigger projects and just show you guys what I'm up to between videos. But I realized that not everybody follows along on those platforms or even likes using them. So given that it's already a month into 2020, I thought I'd go ahead and do a quick batch update and show you guys what I've been working on the last month or so and also give you some updates on what a few people within the community have been working on. Okay, so a few weeks ago I put up a poll on Patreon and I showed you guys a couple of big projects that I've had on the back burner for quite a while now and asked you to help me choose which one I would work on first this year. The project that you guys chose was the giant Game Boy. This is a project that I'm not sure how much I've actually talked about it on my YouTube channel. I've given some updates for it on Instagram and stuff, uh, but if you haven't been following along there, <laughs> it's changed quite a bit since the original idea that I had at first. What I wanted to do was make just kind of a stats tracker that I could hang on the wall that would show things like how many forum members we have, how many people were following along on Instagram and YouTube, that kind of thing. I've seen a lot of people do projects like that and I kind of wanted to put my own spin on it and it was just gonna be a simple Arduino project. But, and part of the reason that it's gotten put on the back burner so long, I couldn't stop adding stuff to it that I wanted to do. So it's gone from what I just described to basically a fully functioning giant Raspberry Pi based gaming handheld. But it's not just a blown up Game Boy Zero, it'll have a few pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. I'll leave it at that for now. But I've been working on the software, fixing some things that have broken from some changes that like Facebook and Instagram made, uh, making it so that it handled launching games better and things like that. I've also been finishing up the models, adding some details that were missing and working on the switch mechanism. So yeah, it feels really good to be making progress on this project again. For more status updates, uh, you can follow along on Instagram and Facebook. I also did a couple of smaller 3D printing projects this month. I recently got a Nintendo Switch Lite and I absolutely love it, but I hated the fact that they took the dock out completely. They didn't even include a stand for it to charge on or anything like that. So I modeled one in Fusion 360 and printed it out. Came out really nice. I put the models up on Patreon for people to download there a few weeks ago and I just put them up on Thingiverse. So if you wanna download them, print them out yourself, have at it. The other one that I did is kind of random, uh, but my kids recently got into the Pokemon trading card game. I wanted something cool for us to put our decks in. So I came up with this 3D printed magnetic Pokeball that'll hold your decks, uh, some coins and dice, things like that. Uh, snaps together, works really well. I was super happy with how it came out. I've got those models up on Patreon for people to download, uh, so you can print it out yourself if you want to. And again, here in a few weeks, I'll have it up on Thingiverse for everybody else to download. The other thing that I've been working on with Helder for the last couple of months off and on is the Minty Pie Lite. I think I might have mentioned this once in a previous video, uh, but basically in version 3 we crammed as many quality of life features in there that we could think of. Things like a lid sensor, a push power button, things like that. So the idea behind the Minty Pie Lite is to take some of those things out, use a different screen, uh, and make it much cheaper. It'll still function the same, it'll just have some of those features taken out. Um, and hopefully make it more accessible to more people. So keep an eye on Helder and my Instagram accounts uh, for some updates on that in the coming months. Next up is something that I am really excited about. If you followed the Game Boy Zero scene, uh, then you've probably heard the name Kite once or twice. His boards make it super easy to put together a Game Boy Zero. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of a legend within the scene. He's out with a new board he just announced it the other day. Uh, this is basically his circuit sword for the Game Boy Zero, uh, but shrunk down for a Game Boy Pocket form factor. So I won't go too in depth about it right now, I'll do a full video about it before too long, uh, but it's got all the features that you would expect uh, from his circuit sword just shrunk down. Things like a DPI screen that runs at a silky smooth 60 frames per second, which is super nice for games like Sonic where everything moves really fast on the screen. Analog inputs for analog sticks, which comes in super handy for things like PlayStation and N64. And the reason it's even able to do N64 at all is because just like the circuit sword, it uses the compute module three, which is basically a Raspberry Pi three. So he's calling this board the Circuit Shield, so kind of goes along with the Circuit Sword that we had in the full-size Game Boy, and he'll have more information about release date and pre-order dates and things like that before too long. So definitely keep an eye on his Instagram or sign up for his mailing list for more information soon. Next up is a really cool project from Modmatic called the .mg. So I'm trying to think how to describe this. This is an Arju Boy. It's basically like an Arduino compatible chip inside of a gaming handheld. So what you do is you plug it into your computer and you can either program a game for it or download one from a huge library of games on their website 
and burn it to it through the Arduino IDE. So that's kind of the idea where the .mg started, but it is not just an Arduboy clone. He's taken it like 10 steps further than they did with that project. So first of all, it's a lot bigger, has a nice color LCD screen uh, and bigger buttons that are actually comfortable to play on. In fact, it uses Game Boy Pocket buttons. And it's got a nice layered shell, sort of like the Null projects from Ampersand that I showed you guys a while back. But the coolest feature that it's got uh, is these removable cartridges on the back. These chips here at the top are the actual brain of the whole thing. It's, it's the chip that does all of the processing and actually holds the game. So you can put one in there and plug it into your computer and put a game on one, take that one out, put a new one in there, put a different game on there and make it kind of like a little Game Boy. So he's working on it right now. This is actually a really early prototype of it, uh, but he's got a much, much more powerful chip on it now. Um, and having that flexibility to be able to put different chips on there opens up all kinds of possibilities. Uh, so yeah, really cool project. It's kind of aimed at people who want to learn to program, uh, program games specifically, or just people who are interested in electronics in general. I think it's going to be really cool. And then finally, I want to give a shout out to Gamebox Systems. That's run by Novel and Postman. You might recognize those names because they did the Cartboy project that I did a video of a while back. They sent me a care package out of nowhere with a bunch of cool stuff in it, including a Cartboy PCB and a few other things that they offer on their site, like the DMTV, which makes it so that you can take actual Game Boy hardware and turn it into a box that you can plug Game Boy cartridges in and play them on your TV. Really cool project and I'm excited to get that put together. Uh, they also sent me a couple other things like this 3D printed part that goes in the bottom of a Game Boy to make it easy to access an SD card uh, for if you're using a mod chip on it. A couple things like that. So huge thanks to them for that and keep an eye on my Instagram. You'll see me putting together some of those projects in the coming weeks. All right guys, well, I think that's about it for now. Um, let me know what you thought about this. I'm thinking about doing a video like this towards the end of every month uh, to kind of catch you up on stuff that maybe wasn't big enough for me to put in one YouTube video um, and just let you know what I've been up to and what some other people in the community have been up to as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.